Welcome back, guys. Uh, today we're going to be talking about a drug that is supposed to be used for asthma. Supposed to. But it is not. And uh, we'll talk about the big uses of it here in just a second. And that is the drug terbutaline. Okay? So why do I got to know about it? We don't carry terbutaline. Why do I got to know? Wait, 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 wait. Well, this is why. Okay? The other uh, name for this drug is breathine. And, um, again, it's used, uh, it, it's a sympathetic, uh, it's a pathomimetic. So, in other words, it kind of mimics um, your, your epinephrine, your beta-2 adrenergic receptors. That's why we like to use it. Because, again, it's a wonderful bronchodilator. We like that, right? Especially if you got a really tight patient, COPD, asthma. Uh, we really does, it works very well, along with albuterol, atrovent, and uh, your solumedrol. Uh, and even some mag sulfate uh, effects, so where this actually reduces and it, and it has very minimal cardiac effects is why they love it. It does do a little bit of vasodilation, uh, and it inhibits the histamine release, which is why we really like it, because then it quits putting, the goblet cells quit putting out all that ugly mucus, okay? So again, it increases the ciliary activity. Uh, again, it, it's, it's just a wonderful, great drug to use in asthma. Now, why are we talking about this as an OB drug, though? Stand by. All right. So the onset of action, we usually give it sub-Q. It's at about 15 to 30 minutes. Uh, you can give it in the meter dose inhaler. Uh, they can give it for, it, it lasts about 5 to 30 minutes before it starts to onset. And it usually lasts somewhere around, if you give it sub-Q, one and a half to four hours. Keep that little thought in mind. And if they give it via meter dose inhaler, it's usually about three to six hours of lasting. Well, Scott, that's great, but we're talking about we're talking about this while we're talking about OBs. Well, here's the other little wonderful thing that terbutaline does. Remember that it's a smooth muscle relaxer. Well, remember that the uterus is a smooth muscle, and therefore it will stop uterine contractions, which is why OB loves it a lot. Now, it is an off-label use. They're not supposed to use it for that, but they do use it for that, um, and they use it to stop contractions and preterm labor. Now... Again, this is why we really, 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 when we get up there and we start talking about this, and the nurses up there are going to say, yeah, I just gave her 0.15 of tributylene. You go, that should throw up the tinfoil and the red flag alerts, okay? And uh, at that point, it is their job to convince you why they're not going to have this baby until they get up to the, to the receiving hospital. And by the way, be a skeptic. We'll get into that here in just a second. So, again, like any sympathomimetic, it can cause anxieties, tremors, uh, a little bit of sweating. Uh, it can cause a little bit of a headache. Uh, again, it can cause a little bit of tachycardia and palpitations. It's usually not bad, though. That's kind of why we like terbutaline. It's not near as bad as, like, an albuterol, let's say. Uh, it can cause some coughing, and, and it can actually cause bronchospasm. So, not again, so if you give it to an asthmatic, you do run the chance of it having the opposite effect. Uh, again, you can get some muscle cramps and facial flushing with this. Uh, kind of a normal, if you look at these side effects, they're kind of normal for your sympathomimetic. So if they know if they know they can't take terbutaline, that's one thing. If they have a digitalis, I'd probably stay away from it. Usually when somebody's being given terbutaline, they usually don't have any of these things. Watch out if they got high blood pressure, especially if they're preeclamptic. Uh, we really don't want to give that. Um, and then coronary artery disease, again, uh, that can be, uh, you don't want to give it to somebody who's already had, uh, it's got vessel disease going on. Uh, so again, especially like with your, um, your older COPD patients, that's what usually exempts them from getting tributylenol. Again, your uh, relative is if they're hypertension or pre-existing tachycardias. Uh, if they are uh, lactating, we should probably not be giving this to, to them. Um, the beta blockers, they can antagonize or inhibit the therapeutic effects. Remember, it works on that beta-2 properties, okay? So, again, the, it, it, you can get some unpleasant side effects when you mix it with sympathomimetic agonist, okay? So, we, we again, if, watch out for your sympathetic, anything that works against the sympathetic nervous system, probably want to stay away from that. Uh, so, and again, high doses can cause central nervous system and cardiac stimulation. Uh, you got to watch out for that, and again... Um, uh, the use of caution with patients with a cardiac disease. And again, it, the cardiac effects can be worse to give to somebody with a known cardiac. Uh, and watch out, by the way, with your diabetics on this one. They can kind of throw off your, your blood sugars with that. Uh, if they had been given terbutaline, uh, vitals every five minutes, I would highly recommend, especially any bronchodilator, 
because we want to make sure that it, that, that it's working and we want to make sure that we don't drop blood pressure and don't send them into a tachycardia. So you really got to watch your blood, your, your vital signs with this, okay? You really got to watch it. It usually comes in one milligram and one ml uh, and then they usually go 0 0.25 sub Q. Remember I said 0 0.15 earlier? That was kind of the dose back uh, when I was still on the streets. But that's what they would give it, uh, 0 0.15 to um, for the, the pregnant patients so that would stop the contractions um, again your pediatric dose yeah you can give it to a pediatric asthmatic uh, or you can give it via nebulized treatment as well um, again the FDA says if they're less than 12 years of age probably not the thing to give um, so that's our cutoff is the 12 year of age so if you see a question on your test some of the effect of a six-year-old wants to give tributylene how much do you give the answer should be none okay now, we give it sub-Q injection or we can nebulize it. And again, uh, pregnancy is usually a really safe drug for the pregnant ladies, okay? But again, remember that the pregnancy use is off-label. So let me give it one last little thing here. If you get up the OB for a transfer and they tell you that they've given them tributylene, remember it wears off in about four hours, okay? Which means if they gave it three and a half hours ago, it's going to wear off halfway through your transfer. So find out when they gave this, find out if they're going to give her more, and then they really need to convince you that this patient's not going to have this baby, okay? I cannot stress that enough. I cannot stress it in, in full. Make sure, again, if they're giving tributylene to this patient, that means that she was probably in preterm labor. And no, she probably wasn't having an asthma attack while she's upstairs, okay? So keep that in mind. Um, you they really need to convince you of this okay that the contractions have stopped you need to look over that fetal monitor and see that it's a nice flat line and that there's no contractions going on okay so that's uh, my little rant about terbutaline it actually is a really good drug uh for when used for asthma again it's got some side effects though when they got coronary artery disease so our older folks really can't benefit from it and that's why we probably don't carry it on the trucks itself so you might hear it you might see it i want you to be familiar with it and Heaven forbid, if you go up to OB and they've given it, find out when and find out if that patient's going to make it. All right, we'll see you guys on the next one.